Good evening and welcome to a Nightline Face-Off. Our question tonight is a very provocative one. Does Satan exist? According to one recent poll, 70% of Americans believe, yes, Satan does exist. But who or what is he? Is he a fallen angel or is he some sort of formless, malevolent force in the universe? And if he doesn't exist, how do we explain why there is so much pain, suffering, and violence in the world today? This is a discussion that opens up a, a whole series of fascinating and fundamental questions about good and evil, about human nature, and the nature of God. It is also a discussion that is likely to provoke some very strong emotions. It is entirely possible that there are people here on this stage with me tonight who believe that others on the stage are doing, if only unwittingly, the work of Satan. It is also possible that there are people on this stage who believe that believing in Satan is dangerous, wrong, and destructive. So let's get right to the discussion, and we're going to start with opening statements. And uh, we're going to go first to Pastor Mark Driscoll. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Mark Driscoll, preaching pastor at Mars Hill Church. And Christians have always believed that there are great distinctions between the creator and the creation, that God is eternal, he is good, he is loving, he is powerful. God made both that which is material and that which is spiritual. And God gave both angels and also human beings free will. Satan was an angel who rebelled against God, in so doing led an insurrection. Other angels followed him. Our first parents joined that rebellion, and ultimately that is the cause of moral evil. It is rebellion against God. Everything God made he declared to be very good, and all that is very bad is because of sin. That is our responsibility as well as Satan's. And God is so good and so gracious that though he is creator and we are creation, he entered into creation as the man Jesus Christ. He came on a rescue mission to save us from sin, from death, from folly, and ultimately from Satan who is our enemy. Jesus lived without sin. He contended with Satan. He was tempted and opposed by Satan. He never yielded to him. He never did sin. He went to the cross and in great affection, he substituted himself for sinners like me and he died in our place for our sins. So that is the essential belief of Christianity, that Satan is real, but so is Jesus. And he works out all things for good. And ultimately, he will redeem all that has been lost through Satan's sin and death. Thank you. We're going to go now to Deepak Chopra for an opening statement. I'm Deepak Chopra, and I think our consciousness, or if you will, our soul, is a place of contrast, because all creation occurs through contrast. You have up and down, you have hot and cold, you have light and darkness. So our essential state is one of ambiguity and ambivalence. And Freud, the great psychiatrist in the last century, the psychologist said that uh, neurosis and sometimes even psychosis is the inability to tolerate our ambiguity. The fact that we are sacred and profane at the same time, that we are divine and diabolical at the same time, that uh, we can have forbidden lust on the one hand and unconditional love on the other. This is the human condition. That there's a part of us that is called the shadow. And this is a relatively recent idea. The shadow is that part of us that is fearful, that is uh, diabolical, that is uh, scared, that has guilt and shame, that is in denial, and that believes in sin. It comes from separation from our divine source. If we want to understand the nature of evil in the world, we need to understand the nature of our own shadows. We need to embrace them, we need to forgive them, we need to share them with each other, and we need to confront them. It is my belief that people who obsess over sin, people who obsess over guilt and shame, and unfortunately, there are religious institutions that have actually idealized guilt and shame and made it into a virtue. And when we obsess over these things and we collectively create this obsession, then we project it out there as this mythical figure that we call Satan. Healthy people do not have any need for Satan. Healthy people 
need to confront their own issues, understand themselves, and move towards the direction of compassion, creativity, understanding, context, insight, inspiration, revelation, and understanding that we are part of an ineffable mystery. That the moment we label that mystery as good and evil, right and wrong, then we create conflict in the world, and that all the trouble in the world today is between religious ideologies. There are approximately 30 wars going on in the world, and they're mostly in the name of God. So I would say, be done with Satan and confront your own issues.